Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I have long recommended that you keep your devices on your local network safely secured behind your router or your firewall so that people from the outside can't access those devices easily. And there's a lot of good reasons to do that these days because we're seeing more and more examples of things like network attached storage devices getting hit with malware because they have exploits that are accessible even if you have a unique and strong password. And there are many examples of people getting all of their data locked out or deleted by a botnet that happens to be looking for a specific type of device. There's a YouTuber here who had an awful story about losing essentially his life's work because his NAS had an unpatched vulnerability and it was accessible to the outside world. The problem is that you might want to access your stuff from the outside world. And if you have everything locked behind the firewall, you can't access it. Now, of course, one of the solutions to getting to your stuff from the outside world would be to set up a personal VPN server. A couple of years ago, I demoed how to do that on a Raspberry Pi, but a lot of routers now come with a VPN server built in, but it still can be a little complex for people that are looking for a point and click solution. And the other day I had to set up something really quickly and I'll explain more about that project in a few minutes. And I chose a tool called Tailscale for the job, which is probably the easiest personal VPN I have ever used. And what's nice about it is that it is incredibly secure and can be easily shared and unshared depending on what your needs are with different people that you're connecting with. And while Tailscale has been around for a while, they recently expanded the number of devices you can use on their free tier to the point now where you can have, if you go to the pricing section here, up to 100 devices on your personal account before you have to start paying for anything. And I think for most people that are using this for personal use, you're probably not gonna hit that limit. So this is a really good solution now. So what we're gonna do in this video is set it up. It won't take all that long. And I'll show you a few different scenarios that this tool might be useful for. And I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is not a paid sponsorship, so nobody's paying for this video. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and get Tailscale set up and we'll do some demos of how it works. Now your first step of course is to head over to the tailscale.com website and set up an account. I wanna note here that you do have to log into their service for this to work although the communications that you will be making between your devices are encrypted and those will not be accessible to Tailscale. But due to the way it works, there needs to be a server that both the computers are connecting through so that they can see each other. Once they do, Tailscale will negotiate a way for those computers to communicate directly to one another, but you still need to go through their service. So if you are looking for a self-hosted VPN solution, the Raspberry Pi thing I talked about or your own router is where you wanna go there, but this does make things a lot easier. So to get started, you can click on the try for free here. And what's neat about this is that it uses existing identity providers for this to work. So you can use your Google account, your Microsoft, your GitHub, your Apple account uh, versus having to set up something with its own password with them. Uh, this of course means that you, make, you need to make sure that your passwords you're using for your identity providers are secure and you've got two-factor authentication set up and all that stuff because the identity provider here is what you're logging in with and so if you've got a weak password combination on any of these identity providers that's going to be a point of vulnerability so make sure you get your account secured and you're good to go from there so i'm going to sign up here with google and I'm gonna log into my Google account and we'll take it to the next step after that. So now that I've logged in with my Google account, we're taken to their workflow here to get started. And as you can see, it detected that I am on a Mac right now, so it's got that as my option. And if I click this button here, it will take me over to the Mac App Store to download the Tailscale application for Mac. And in a few minutes, we'll set this up on Windows also. So let me do the Mac install real quick. And once we get the software installed, we'll pick it up from the next step. So I downloaded the client software from Tailscale here and we'll click on get started. And what we're gonna have to do here on the Mac is to allow VPN configurations because it does connect to the Mac's native VPN system. So I'm going to click allow here. And now that we've done that, it will get things started and ask us to sign in to the network. So I'm going to click sign in here. And what it's gonna do now is 
go back to my web browser and because I am already signed in with my Google account, it's asking if I want to add this device to the network and I'm going to say yes and click on connect here. And now it's asking us if we want this to start when we log into the computer. I'm going to say no because I only want to load it up when I need it. But if you find yourself always in need of this, you can have it load at the time of startup. And I like that they give you this option because I hate things that install and stay resident all the time without my control. So now I can control it. And when I want to connect to my home network, I just load up Tailscale. So I'll say manually there. And now that we're connected, we can find our network devices. So I'm going to go over to the Show Tailscale menu. And if we go up to the top of the screen here, you can see now that my device is on the network that I have just set up. And so we've got my MacBook Air here along with an IP address. Now this IP address does not have any accessibility on the regular internet. I have to be connected to Tailscale's network and I can't just connect to anyone's Tailscale IP address. It has to be connected to my account either directly or through the share feature that we'll demo in a few minutes. So right now I've got nothing else on my Tailscale network except the Mac on the desk in front of me. So why don't we grab my Windows PC and add it to the network next. So now that we're on the PC, we're going to go to Tailscale.com and I'm going to go over to the download section and it's detected that we're on a Windows computer. So I'm going to download the client for Windows and click on save here. And what this will do is download that client software and what I'm going to do now is run it real quick and install it. It's a little different than the Mac because it does not install through the Windows App Store. Uh, but what I'll do here is install it, give it permission to do so, and we'll let that process finish up. So once the install here is done, we'll jump back and see what the next step is. All right, I installed the software now on the PC. I didn't see it pop up anything after it was done, but I might have been a little too quick on closing a web browser window. So if you have a situation like I do, if you pull up the uh, little carrot here on the right hand side of your taskbar, you will see Tailscale running. And I'm just going to click on that and go over to login. And what this should do is pull up a web page as, as it just did here. And now I'm presented with my options for logging in. And remember, because we can use an existing authentication provider, I can sign in now with my Google account which is what I'm going to do. So let me get that sign in done and we'll see what happens next. All right, so I got the PC now connected to my Tailscale network. And if I jump back to my Mac here, you can see that we're now seeing it on this side as well. And they're giving me some instructions here to run a little ping command in terminal. So if I do that, you can see that the two computers are communicating with each other. And this is no surprise that it works because both of these computers right now are on the same physical network, but we're going to change that in a few minutes here. But it looks like all is good here from a setup perspective. So I'm going to say success, it works. And then they're telling me I can start setting up additional devices. So why don't we do that now? Because part of our next demonstration is going to involve an Android phone. So let me get the Tailscale app running on here, and then we'll have some fun. So let's get the Android phone going here next. This is a Pixel 6a that in full disclosure Google sent to the channel free of charge to review a little while back. I'm going to go and find the Tailscale app in the Google App Store and install it. Again, pretty small footprint here, so it should install very quickly. And I'm going to go over to Open now. And you can decide to have it send you notifications or not, but we'll go through the initial workflow here. And just like before, it is looking for my login provider. And because I'm using Google, I'm going to hit that. But you do have the option to sign in with other providers here as well. Uh, but let me go into sign in with Google and we'll see what happens next. All right, so after I logged in, just like we saw on the Mac, we do need to give it some permissions here to connect up to the rest of the network. We did that and check it out. I've got both the Lenovo gaming machine and my MacBook Air available to me. But we're not done yet because I've got an iPhone I want to get going to. So let me show you how the iPhone works. Now on the iPhone, Tailscale is available in the App Store. I had it installed previously, so I'm going to re-download it. I'm going to click on Open here. And it is pretty much the same startup flow as before. So I'm going to click Get Started here. And I'm going to log into my Google account again. And then I'll show you what the steps are after that. Now on the iPhone, Tailscale is going to hook into the iPhone's native VPN capabilities. 
So what it's going to want is your iPhone's passcode to add that configuration, which I just typed in here. I'm going to click on Done. And then it's also going to uh, ask me for some permissions here. And as before, it's going to ask me to log in with my Google account or whatever identity provider that I wanted to use with it. And once I do that, it will then ask me if I want to add this device to my network. I'm going to click on Connect here. And now it is part of my network where I can see the Lenovo gaming machine, the MacBook, and now the Pixel 6a. And if I bring the Pixel 6a back out here again, you'll see that it is seeing the iPhone. And now these devices can all see each other no matter where they are in the world. But if you didn't want it on all the time, you can just go over to the mobile app here and click on the active button to stop the connection. And then to reactivate it, you just click it on again so you can uh, jump on and off only when you need it if you don't want to have a permanent connection. So now what I want to do is take this Windows computer and move it to a totally different network that's not accessible from the one that I'm currently operating on. And let me give you a real world scenario that I just did using Tailscale. Let's get that hooked up. Now my PC here is running a piece of software called vMix. This is live video production software that I use to produce video here on the channel. And one of the cool things about vMix is that you can bring in video from long distances using a protocol called SRT. And right now I've set up two SRT inputs on vMix. And what I want to do is have my phones send video into vMix to kind of simulate a remote production environment where I've got a couple of phones out in the field and this located back at headquarters an hour away. Now, because the computer and my phones are on different networks, Normally, I would have to open up a port on my router in order for this to work. In fact, in this instance, I'll, I would have to open up two ports because I have two uh, SRT inputs waiting. But because we have the computer now on tail scale along with the phones, it's actually a lot easier. And so what I can do here is just tap on the Lenovo gaming uh, laptop here on my list, which is the PC that we're looking at here. And even though it's on a different internet connection, I can still connect via this Tailscale IP. So I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard and let me load up my SRT camera application now and connect it to the computer. Now the app we're using to send video into the PC here is called Larix Broadcaster. This is free on iOS and Android, at least for the SRT video transmission. And as you can see here in the URL, I have typed in the uh, tail scale IP that was assigned to our Lenovo gaming PC, which is what is currently running vMix on a different network. And I'm also pointing it at port 5000, which is the port that this uh, listener here is looking for. So now that I have that SRT connection set up, let's start transmitting video now to the vMix computer. And remember, this phone is on a different internet connection than the PC, but as you can see, the video is coming right through. All we had to do was install the Tailscale client and point this one at port 5000, and all seems to be working well here. You will notice there is a significant amount of latency, about two seconds worth, uh, but that is something that I configured myself because SRT is designed to build up a bit of a buffer to account for connection difficulties, and you can dial that down a little bit depending on your individual situation here. But Altogether, it works great. And this is something that I actually did in the real world the other day because some friends of mine uh, wanted help live streaming something that was going on in my town. They live an hour away. They couldn't get down here quick enough to live stream the event. So I brought my phone with me, set up tail scale on their computer and on the phone, and I was able to get my video sent right up to them without having to go through a lot of configuration on the router side. It was super simple. Let's see if my other phone will connect now. All right, so here's the Android phone, again, on the same network as the iPhone and a different network than the computer. And boom, just like that, we got configured here without having to poke holes in the router, uh, just connecting to that tail scale IP. But what if you wanted to allow one of your devices to be shared with somebody, but not all of them? Well, they've got a solution for that, so let's take a look at how to do it. So if you wanted to share something on your personal account with somebody else, what you can do is go to the device that you want to share and click on the share button, that's it. You generate a link and you send it over to them. They do need to have a tail scale account for this to work, but if they do, what'll happen here after they click on the link is that they will then be connected 
to your device, but only that device. So for example, if I shared this with my friend, the Lenovo computer, my friend would not get access to my phone or my MacBook or my other phone unless I specifically shared those devices with them. So you have a lot of control as to how all of this works. Now, once a device is shared, it will be shared until you revoke that access. So whenever my friend logs into Tailscale now, he's going to have access to my Lenovo gaming computer at this IP address. But if I am done with him using my computer, I can click on the uh, little period icon here and go over to sharing settings and just revoke their access. And once that is done, they can no longer connect to that computer even if they use the Tailscale IP address that they were connecting to it with before. So you can very easily give somebody temporary access and then remove it. And what we did when we did the video project with my friend the other day was I had him set up his own Tailscale account, add his vMix computer to it, and then share that computer with me. So the next time this happens, we don't even have to set up anything. He just has to boot it up and I hit the button on the phone and we're in. But if he ever decides he doesn't trust me anymore, he can very easily remove that access. Now it's important though to understand how sharing works. So in the example we just did, I shared this computer out with somebody else. Now when that person connects to this computer, they can interact with it, but I don't have access to the computer that they're accessing from unless they share that computer with me. So if you want to be able to send things back and forth to somebody, you have to share with them and they have to share with you. Now you can also install this on a network attached storage device. There are clients for Synology and QNAP and I think a few other brands as well. So let me get it installed on a Synology NAS that I have on the same network as this PC and I'll show you some ways you can connect to it from outside of your local network. And as you can see on my list of network devices now that Synology is available to us and if I go back to my Mac I can take that IP address and type it into my web browser and as you can see here once I execute that it takes us right over to the login screen so I can access this Synology NAS like it was on my local network but it is safely behind my firewall so unless somebody has my credentials and is logged into Tailscale they can't get in and what's nice about this is that if you really wanted to use your NAS features like photo synchronization and file syncing and all the other things that they offer, you can now use them in the way that you would like without the security issues of having ports opened up on your router. And the whole setup process is pretty much plug and play. Connect your Google account and you're done. Now, one last thing to take a look at here and that is its performance. VPNs typically have a pretty big performance hit and this one is no exception. So what I'm doing right now is running an iPerf test where we're sending a bunch of data from this computer, which is connected to a one gigabit symmetrical fiber optic connection to another one that's on a six gigabit fiber optic connection. And both of these are through the same ISP, so we're not getting routed out to the internet here. And as you can see, we maxed out at around 33 megabits per second or so on that test. And that's not unusual for one of these of encrypted networking solutions. There's a lot going on before the packet leaves the computer and a lot of it will depend on the performance of the two computers talking to each other. This one is communicating with a MacBook Pro, a recent one, so I think this is pretty much the most I'm going to see uh, out of this connection here. But it's good enough for that SRT video demo that we looked at earlier. I'm only pushing about seven or eight megabits per second with that. And I have found the speed here varies quite a bit uh, between one test and the next. So it's something to uh, just be aware of. You're not going to see the full connection speed that you would expect from a fiber optic connection here, but you've got security. And I think in many cases, the types of things that you might need to do when connecting outside to inside are not going to require all that much bandwidth. All in though, I am very impressed with Tailscale, especially due to how easy it is to get up and running. If you know how to log into your Google account, you can get this to work. And I think for a lot of folks looking for a quick and easy and secure solution, this is what I would recommend at this point, especially because you can connect up to 100 devices, you don't have to do anything to your router, and it's very easy to share devices with friends and other folks that you may want to grant access to, and you have a lot of control over all of it. 
This, though, is the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more to this than I specifically did not cover in this video because I wanted to direct it to casual users looking for a solution. But if you're interested, we can look at some other things you can do with TailScale, including using it more like a traditional VPN where you can get access to other computers on the local network that are not connected to TailScale. So more to come. Let me know what you want to see down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.